Hello, and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper, and today we're going to be taking a look at the first part of the Triumph TR6 project. Behind me, you see the 1976 Triumph TR6. Now, this is my dad's car, and when he bought it from auction, it had a lot of issues. He bought it because it looked good, and it was, he was nostalgic for a car he had when he was in college, but this was not the best buy. Immediately, I found a ton of rust that had been hidden by the dealership that sold it under a mountain of undercoating. So we sent it off to have the floor pans replaced and the frame patched. Now it's structurally sound, and I've agreed to do some other modernizations to make it what he wants it to be. The car will ultimately be relocated down to Arizona, which will give it a lot longer life as that will stave off a lot of the rust issues. But the poor wiring of a 70s Triumph still exists and is a nightmare to deal with. And in general, the Warren carburetors and generally abused setup under the hood is not the best for long-term reliability in extreme heat or major elevation changes. To fix these issues, I'm going to be building a whole new wiring harness based around a PMU-16, as he likes the configurability that that offers on my other cars. I will also be installing a fuel injection conversion system to the car that should make it a lot more flexible when dealing with different temperatures and different elevations. I'll be replacing the radiator and the cooling fan with an electric cooling fan in order to give us some more tunability around that and hopefully give it a little bit more flexibility when dealing with extreme heat down in Arizona. Now, overall, this is a fairly big project, so this will be broken out into several phases. But to start with, let's just get under the hood, tear off a bunch of parts, and see what kind of condition some of this stuff's in. Here is the fruits of our teardown. So I pulled the exhaust and intake manifolds out with the, also the carburetors on top of it. I went ahead and basically yanked the pump for the emission system, but left some of the emissions pieces in here. Uh, the EGR system was doing nothing. It was completely blocked over with carbon. The pump was flopping around. I mean, it's all broken. So the fact that it's going away is no big loss. The intake manifold was a bear to get off. It had corrosion all over these locating studs and somebody had broken off a couple studs and either put tack weld on there or there was corrosion buildup, something that oversized the head of the broken studs so that the manifold didn't want to slide off of them. So 
that was a little scarred up when I got it off. Plus the surface area didn't look like it had been treated well in the past and there were gouges and things. So I sent that off to get it surfaced and I'll powder coat it before it comes back since it'll all be nice and clean. The exhaust came off pretty well. I just had to cut a few things underneath the car because there were some welds and some rust that just would not budge. I'm guessing somebody was trying to fix something in the past. So I just nipped them off of there with the angle grinder and everything came out and I extracted all the studs for the system because it'll be getting all new studs and new hardware. Uh, overall, that was a pretty easy part of the process. I think the biggest parts will be to come when I tackle all the questionable wiring design new harnesses and start doing things like rebuilding the distributor and things to cooperate with the EFI. But let's go ahead, take a look at the carburetors. Here we have the carburetors off of the intake manifold. Now, when I took these off, I was kind of hoping that they would be in better shape than they are. But basically the spacers behind the carburetors just fell apart and left gasket material behind. And so I have to scrape all this off and get them prepared for going back on with new new seals i ordered some spacers already and so they're on the way i will clean these up um, they have years and years of gunk and grease on them so they just need to be beautified a little bit i won't be doing full rebuilds because these are basically just housings and throttle bodies at this point the guts of them will be replaced with fuel injectors which will be shooting the fuel basically straight at the throttle body so other than incidental leakage that drains down here, they're not actually holding fuel and they're definitely not holding any pressure. So there shouldn't really be any leaking issues and tearing them completely down would be a much bigger headache. I will be doing the beautification though to also the linkages and other parts that are really gross just because if the intake manifold comes back all nicely powder coated, these should be at least somewhat cleaned up to match. I won't be diving into that until I get the new electric fan and radiator off my bench. So that will be probably happening in the next video. As you saw, we made good progress on the teardown and we are ready to move forward with the other parts of the project. Now to prevent the videos from becoming too long and to make it easier for people to find the information they are looking for, the future phases of this project will be broken out sort of by category to make it easier to search for a specific term or a specific product you're looking to see used. If you have any questions about anything I'm going to be doing to this car or this project in general, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.